we've talked a number of times in the last few years, and obviously we've seen, we've, we've known the end is in sight for Potter for some time. You've seen sort of like when that was going to end. And clearly, you know, you have to be somewhat calculated a little bit as you kind of carve out a new career. You could have definitely taken some time off after Potter. Yeah. You could have done a, a great number of things. Yet this year, no pressure, but this feels like the biggest professional year of your life. Definitely. You've got the show, you've got the last Potter, you've got the woman in black. Yeah. This is kind of yeah. the year where Daniel Radcliffe shows off a lot more of himself than anyone's ever well, seen before, hopefully, right? hopefully, yeah. I mean, you know, as you said, I think if um, if I had been taking some time off and not doing stuff, I think that the, the temptation in terms of the media and the public to a certain extent is to, if you don't hear from a child star for a while, you can then kind of condemn them to the right. been and gone pile. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. I wanted to make sure people knew that I wanted to work and that I didn't necessarily want to take the easy option of just, you know, doing, uh, immediately signing up to another huge tentpole fantasy series. Right. Um, and I wanted to do stuff that, you know, for me, I get very, very bored unless I'm doing something that challenges me and makes me jump through a few hoops. So, um, yeah, I mean, as, but as you say, yeah, this is a huge year for me uh, with The Last Potter. This, with this show as well, you know, how to succeed is, is a huge challenge, and we're really, really just at the very beginning of it at the moment. Um, and, and then, you know, early next year, the Woman in Black comes out, and so it's yeah, the next sort of twelve months are are going to be uh, quite telling, I think. When do you reach like your Potter saturation points? Because you must, where it's just sort of like, if someone says the name Harry Potter to me one more time, I'm going to tear their head off. Um, is it right now? <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Josh, oh, no. no. Not at all. No, you know, I I can't have that attitude towards it. Right. Like it's it's been the making of me. It's I you know, the other day when we were doing at the moment in the show we're doing uh, we're collecting for Broadway Cares Equity Fights Eight and so which involves me and John doing a little speech after the curtain, um, uh, well rather before the curtain goes down. Sure. And um, and then we sometimes we do an auction, so we auction off a bow tie or a book or something. And um, and somebody had shouted, "You're a wizard, Harry!" And I just thought, I mean, in a way, I'm kind of annoyed at you right now. But on the other hand, you've done quite well to restrain yourself for two and a half hours. <laughs> you get that moment. And not shouting that in the middle of the show. So kind of I have to be grateful. Right. But no, you know, it's it's been the making of me. It's been, you know. I'm immensely proud to be a part of it and it's given me some of the happiest years of my life. So sure. as much as, and you know, the encouraging thing is more and more people do know my real name now, which is nice, <laughs> which it, it, it is, I won't lie. That is a nice thing to have people call you Dan rather than Harry is, right. is a pleasure. This, this character Finch, it must be refreshing to play a guy that's got some, some queer flaws. Yeah. Too. I mean, Potter does, every character does, but this is but Yeah, not I Harry mean, he's, he, no, this is not Harry Potter. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, very manipulative, um, very uh, kind of charming character, but he is, you know, a lot of the things he does are unpleasant. To me, that's one of the signs of the, the brilliance of the writing of this show, and you do have to bear in mind it did win the Pulitzer Prize, was that, you know, you've got characters like Bigley and like Finch who are both doing things that you go, that you sort of balk at and go, that's very unappealing as a character trait. But yet they're irresistible, right. and you love them, and you and you and you do want Finch to succeed. I think one of the there's there are these smiles that I do towards the audience a lot in the show, and um, the purpose they serve, as well as being quite funny, is that um, they kind of make the audience complicit in what Finch is doing, right. so that you can't really have any moral objections to his success yeah, because you're in he's on sort the of taking you, yeah sure. exactly he's <laughs> he's taking you with with him. Um, so no, it's a very, very clever show. It's, you know, very, very funny. Um, uh, you know, there are some, there are great jokes in it and to be able to kind of learn from some, well, two people actually, not just John Larroquette, who is, um, you know, comically, he is, he's, he's, he's a great actor, but you know, his comic sense of kind of anarchy, is, I, I call him an anarchist and sometimes he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know what's gonna come out. I, I doubt very much that I've heard the same line reading twice from him. Um, the other guy in the show who, who is the same is, is Rob Bartlett, uh, who is, uh, again, brilliant um, comedian. And so to be able to watch and learn from both of them 
kind of how it's done has been uh, has been a very very good learning process for me. I know this is always one of those hard questions to ask an actor or director, but who's on the shortlist of actors or directors that like you would love to kind of like um, collaborate with at some point? Christopher Nolan is, I think, one of the best, most ambitious directors around. And apparently, I've spoken to people who work with him and just say he's great. He knows exactly what he wants. He's, you know, so I've heard such good things about him. You know, and to work with as well as obviously having seen the amazing work he's done, um, he would be very, very high up on my list. Uh, the Cohen brothers, like you know, if we're talking dream world sure. here, you know, the Coens. Um, Edgar Wright is somebody that I love. You know, I was a huge fan of Scott Pilgrim. Um, I can see you in that, in that universe. You know, I, I, I kind of, I, you know, I'd love some of that stuff. Um, who else is there? I mean, and and indeed, you know, Seth Rogen, Judd Apatow, and all those guys, I think, do fantastic work. Um, so yeah, kind of, it's. I mean, and in terms of working with actors. You know, I mean, I'd love to work with people like, you know, a lot. James McAvoy's work is stuff that I just go brilliant. You know, Daniel Craig. Um, there are just so many great actors around, you know, that I could learn so much from and would love to. I know when I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, you said that uh, Rickman had uh, stopped by since yes. then. Um, a bunch of the Potter gang was in town for yeah. that opening here, and I know they got a chance they to see the show. It. Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, David Thewlis's reaction was the sweetest, I have to say. What he was, was just, he was just, it was just, you know, because I, I know David, and he's a lovely guy, and I don't think in all the time that we spent together we've ever talked about musicals. I didn't, I, I, I he was the last, per, you know, you know, when I got, I, it's, it's terrible. The fact, I, you know, I know the guy, I know he's a lovely, funny, you know, he's not a deep, heavy guy. But when when someone's in that film naked, you just go. You probably musicals probably aren't your thing, right? <laughs> but he just loved it, and he was he was just over the moon. He was really proud, and like it was it was really really cool. And yeah, and him and Helen McCrory and Bonnie Wright obviously was there, and the Phelps twins in Nirvana and uh, Freddie Stromer, and you know. Um, Is there anyone at this point that would make you nervous to show the show? Like, who, whose validation, whose seal of approval would mean be meaningful for you to see the show um, at this point? Well, the one that happened on Equus, which somebody told me five minutes before the show that Stephen Sondheim was in the audience, and that totally just, I had the worst show I think I've ever had. Um, so, you know, his, you know, if you get his seal of approval, you're kind of, made in this part of the town particularly <laughs> you know um you know abe burroughs is a, just a relative of mine so i gave I you the seal of that. approval so you're, you're good okay now. cool so i'm good with the borough's <laughs> family estate that's that is good there you go um but no i mean so i mean i suppose you know he would if i knew he was in the audience i'd be very nervous we've had liza in the audience twice now she was in again last night um and that that's you know that's pretty cool yeah. and i've you know met and chatted with her and yeah, have so have any of the previous finches been, has like, did Robert not, come not, yet? Or not yet. Um, I heard a rumour that Robert Morse was going to be opening night, but he wasn't. Um, but um, I think he'll, I really hope both him and Matthew uh, come, because I'd love to, I'd love, uh, yeah, I'd just love to hear their thoughts and hear what the experience was like for them. Sure. And particularly Robert Morse, because he was so iconic in this room.